Good morning all. The problem with shopping at Lidl is that you inevitably end up in the non-food aisle and end up bringing home a whole load of gadgety things like solar summer fairy lights and uh, a football themed uh, power bank and also this which caught my eye it's a radio controlled alarm clock so let's have a look at this alarm clock because i've never actually had a, a radio controlled clock before i don't think uh, let's see it'd be nice if this were a uh, mechanical one because as far as i know it sits there on 12 o'clock and then when it picks up the radio signal the hands wind around really quickly to the correct time but anyway this one's a digital one not an analog one uh, so let's switch it on by pulling this uh, plastic tab out which connects the battery and away it goes uh, the snooze button works as a light so that's saying midnight uh, the first of the first uh, it's also saying die which is not very friendly is it that's not very nice um, and it's also trying to acquire the uh, radio signal in order to sync the clock with the radio transmitter. Now die of course means Dienstag which is Tuesday in German and that's because the default language that this thing is set to is German. Now to change that you have to press and hold the menu button but interestingly let's put the light on that doesn't actually seem to do anything while it's trying to acquire the radio so can I turn the radio off yes now press and hold the menu button and now we're able to set well this is the time zone so let's go negative one that puts um, me to the 31st of the 12th 31st of December and that's not Monday it's Montag so let's wait until it well actually let's carry on uh, that's the time that's the date and then there's the language. Now that's German, Italian, English. So with uh, minus one hours from Central European time, because that's the default on this unit, because of course it's German, it came from Lidl. So it's preset to Central European time. So I've set it to minus one hours from there, that's uh, UK time. And using the English language, when that finally settles down, that should give me uh, Monday in English. And now, of course, the time will only be set correctly, unless I set it, of course, uh, when it picks up the radio signal. And it's probably not going to do that downstairs. It, it has been doing it upstairs, uh, but probably not down here because there's too much radio interference down here. And, of course, the signal strength is going to be lower uh, downstairs. So what I want to do is uh, open this thing up and take a look inside, see if I can find the radio receiver and see if I can tap into that radio receiver. Um, I might also try and add an antenna to it, which would just be a very long piece of wire. See if I can tap into the radio receiver, um, check out the carrier wave, and also see if we can see uh, some modulation of that carrier wave, which will be the time and date data. So uh, let's start by, oh, that's not gonna fit. Smaller screwdriver required. So let's take these four screws out of the back and see whether the radio module is separate to the clock module in which case we stand some chance of uh, tapping into the radio module output uh, to put that on the scope. So this is what's inside there's um, a clock board here uh, the display seems to be under there uh, that's got a crystal on it uh, a capacitor and also a thermistor because on the clock you have a temperature display. Yes, there it is, 23.3 centigrade. Um, it's trying to acquire the radio signal, but I don't think it's gonna manage that. Let's just turn the light on. Because as I say, this room is very noisy from a uh, RF point of view, and also I'm downstairs. Uh, inside here, you can see uh, the coil of wire wrapped round a ferrite bar at the bottom back there. The uh, enamel copper wire goes up to a tiny little green board up there, hanging off the PCB for the switches. And I'm hoping I can pull that uh, board out so that we can have a look at the um, 
receiver, which is clearly that little green thing. And uh, here is the switchboard. Just see uh, a load of switches on there. And also the radio board. Now the enamel copper wire from the coil uh, is wired across a capacitor there. There's a little crystal, a chip, and some resistors and capacitors. Let's get in a bit closer. So it's named um, an RC8000V1. Uh, there, as I say, is the crystal, the chip, a few resistors and capacitors. Uh, what's that thing there? Oh, it looks like just nothing fitted to that point. And then the um, enamel copper wires are soldered across C1, this capacitor up here. So if I'm going to add an antenna, where would I add it? Just solder it to one end of the... Um, one end of this uh, coil, maybe. Let's see if this is still acquiring. Oh, that's interesting. It's doing a sort of combined flashing of the main part. 2310, it's definitely the wrong time. And then flashing of the, the sort of um, aerial bit coming out of there. I don't know what those things mean. Maybe I should have a look at the manual at this point. Well, it doesn't say a lot here. It just says uh, the DCF symbol indicates the DCF reception status. Uh, LC display, quick function check, starts receiving the DCF signal. For details, refer to the automatic and manual DCF signal activation. This process may take a few minutes and is indicated by the DCF symbol flashing in the info field number 7. Uh, upon successful reception of the radio signal, the DCF symbol will stop flashing. So that's all it says. It also says uh, it's now in clock mode and indicates the current time CET, Central European time. So that's why I had to set it minus one hour for UK time and then change the language. Uh, the DCF signal time signal transmitter consists of time pulses emitted by one of the most accurate clocks in the world, close to Frankfurt, uh, Frankfurt am Main, Germany. This varies by one second in 30,000 years. Well, the point is, there's an atomic clock somewhere, and then the uh, time from there is sent out as a series of pulses. Now, quite how the, the delay between the atomic clock and the pulses being sent out, what that would be, I don't know. Uh, what else does it say about the DCF? It says... Receive the time signal under optimum conditions up to a distance of 1,500 kilometres uh, from Frankfurt. So we are within 1,500 kilometres of Frankfurt. So I should be able to receive it, but perhaps I need a bit of help. Now up here on the um, windowsill, I've got a piece of wire. This is actually the ground from my solar panels. But that uh, runs quite a long way, sort of up over the house and round out to the solar panels which are in the garden. So I'm reckoning that could be an antenna. It's just a very long piece of wire. If I stick some crock clips on there and bring it down to the clock, uh, should I direct couple it or capacitor couple it? I don't really know, but let's just try connecting something up. Well, I'm not sure if my antenna idea is going to work. So instead, I've just brought it out into the garden. Uh, let's see if I can get the sun on it. So the symbol is flashing. Doesn't seem to be acquiring because it's still saying the 31st of December. Let's take it up to the end of the garden. Every now and again the display changes from the sort of base of that antenna symbol flashing to some actual sort of radio waves coming into that antenna. There we are. It just changed then. Let me see if I can get that a bit more consistent. I've got a feeling it might almost be the camera causing interference. If I bring the camera too close to it, you seem to get that flashing base. If I take the camera further away, you seem to get the radio waves thing. So maybe I'll just leave it here for a bit with the camera turned off. Right, I've stuck it on the roof of the shed to see if it can uh, acquire this signal. It hasn't done yet. It's still saying the 31st of December and the time's wrong. Now Germany is over there somewhere, so hopefully it'll pick it up in due course. Aha, it seems to have got it. It's uh, the 4th of August, it is a Thursday, and it is approaching midday. And the symbol there for the uh, antenna thing 
has now become uh, static and on so that means it's acquired the signal so yes it's got the time so now that it's acquired the time signal of course the clock is just running under its own crystal um, it's also got DST there which is daylight saving time now that would have come over as probably one bit in the packet of data that came over the radio uh, it is daylight saving time of course because it's summer August now I thought that there was a time transmitter in rugby in the UK um, this one because this product is German I mean it's uh, it's supplied by Lidl and it uh, it's clearly uh, made in Germany, GmbH there, um, is tuned to the German time signal transmitter. So what's the difference between the, the rugby one and the German one? So I've gone of course to Wikipedia and here's the article on radio clock, not to be confused with clock radio of course, and uh, there's a list here of the radio time signal stations. Now some of them uh, these ones in Russia and Belarus, they're running at a frequency of 25 kilohertz. That's ridiculous. That's barely above audio frequency. That's very, very long wave, low frequency transmission. Um, if we come down to here, 60 kilohertz, we've got the United Kingdom one at Anthorn. Now it says here, uh, before the 1st of April 2007, the signal was transmitted from rugby. So that's the one I was thinking of, but that's obviously been moved to Anthorn. That one's called MSF. And if we go a little bit further down, we've got this one in Germany called DCF 77. And the manual in this clock radio keeps talking about DCF. So it's this one. It's at uh, Main Flingen. Uh, I presume that's uh, just outside Frankfurt. 77.5 kilohertz. Um, which has a range of 2,000 kilometers. And uh, if we look on eBay for a uh, radio-controlled clock, there's one here which is a DCF radio-controlled clock, so that's presumably tuned to the German time signal. Uh, $16. I'm sure this clock that I got from Lidl was $4.99. So actually, it seems like it was a real bargain. And if I scroll down a bit, in fact, this item here, which I was looking at earlier, um, this is an MSF signal clocks. This one presumably is uh, tuned to the UK time transmitter. Now here's a page at NPL, which I think is the National Physical Laboratory. Um, this is the MSF radio time signal. It's transmitted from Anthorn radio station in Cumbria. Uh, it says here the signal carrier frequency is maintained at 60 kilohertz to within two parts in 10 to the 12 controlled by cesium atomic clocks and all that stuff, so it's pretty accurate. Um, there is uh, a PDF here which explains the format of the time and date code, so we could have a look at that, but my clock is DCF, so uh, let's see if I can find DCF. Right, I found this, timetools.co.uk, the DCF 77 German time and frequency broadcast. Uh, there are a number of national time and frequency transmissions for a number of countries around the world. In the US, the WWVB is Colorado. In Europe, MSF and DCF77 signals are broadcast from Cumbria in the UK and Frankfurt in Germany. And there's a bit more uh, detail about this. Now, there's also here, data is broadcast as a series of bits in a binary coded decimal BCD format. And here it gives you all the bits and what they contain. And uh, there's uh, BCD encodings of month, week, year. There's also parity bits, which presumably uh, the receiver will reject if the parity bit's wrong. So that helps it decide whether it's received a reliable signal or not. But what I really want to do is see if I can uh, see anything coming out of this little radio board. Now, helpfully, there's some markings here. Uh, there are four connections here from the radio board going back to this ribbon cable onto the CPU board. And these are marked PON, OUT, GROUND and VDD. So if I look at OUT relative to GROUND on the scope, I may be able to see some data. 
Right, I've soldered a couple of wires onto the out pin and the ground pin and connected my scope. Let's have a look at the uh, display. And there are some pulses coming out of the out pin, but they're all, they're very slow, which you'd expect with a very slow carrier wave. But these pulses, for one thing, are heavily differentiated, or they look differentiated. They're not occurring very often. Perhaps it depends how near I get to the receiver. Uh, it all looks a bit of a mess and uh, I'm wearing the wrong t-shirt really. This is a white t-shirt so I'm going to go and put a black t-shirt on because it uh, will be easier to see the screen. So uh, this is these are the pulses that are coming out of the out pin. Now I can't make much sense of these. I don't know why they're varying in amplitude. I don't know why they're this strange shape. This this sort of shape. That's very peculiar. So on very slow scan, this is what's coming out. But it's all a bit jumbled, so it's not surprising that the clock is really struggling. Ah, now there's some more data. But it's really struggling to pick up these time codes and make any sense of them. Very interesting. I don't think I'm going to be able to analyze uh, those bits of data for whether they're month, day, week, or whatever. I was just wondering whether I could perhaps connect my antenna back on now. My bit of wire, and I've got a, a 220 puff capacitor. I might try and attach this to the uh, ferrite and see if I get any more information on the scope. So I've just sort of dangled that piece of wire. It's just hanging on the uh, one side of the coil. And I do think it received a signal because that's actually gone off now. And I think that's because it acquired the signal and has turned that P on, the power on line off. So oh, that's just fallen off. So let's just press and hold that, which should put it back into reacquire mode. So there it goes. Let's see if I can just attach this to one side of the... That does seem to be bringing in a fair bit of data now. And if it acquires the signal and can make sense of it, and can set the clock, then it should actually mute this stream of data because it'll turn off that P on signal and this stream of data will be muted. If that happens, I'll restart the camera. Hmm, well I'm struggling to get it to do it now. It just seems to be uh, continually trying to acquire that data. Now in the manual it does say it will keep trying for seven minutes and then if it uh, can't capture all the data intact, it will give up and stop after seven minutes. So that could be another reason why it timed out, I suppose. Um, okay, so that's the data coming out. Can't really make any sense of that. But let's turn my attention now to the carrier wave and attach the scope um, to one end of the coil and just see if we can see this 77.5 kilohertz carrier wave. Well, I've capacitively coupled the scope probe to one end of the uh, ferrite rod connection and I'm getting something here, but I don't know whether I'm perhaps interfering with that. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle may be at work. Perhaps I'm affecting the frequency of what's going on there. But the scope is sort of reading it as, well, 63 kilohertz. So not the 77.5 kilohertz that it's meant to be. So I'm not even sure that that is the carrier wave. It's a shame. I was hoping I would be able to see that. And I'm not even sure what this is really. If I try to um, speed the scope up to see it in more detail, the scope just sort of then fills it in with high frequency noise. And that noise is a much higher frequency. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. I mean, there could be interference coming from all over the place, but no, I'm not really seeing that 77.5 kilohertz signal. Shame, I was hoping to see that. Well, now that's weird. The clock just went beep, reset itself, uh, and the batteries are really hot. Really hot, those batteries are, so I'm not sure whether I shorted something out. Yeah, they're just really hot. And they're alkalines. What have I done? 
Well, it doesn't look like I've entirely killed it because uh, data seems to be coming out of that de-out pin. So it seems that the uh, receiver is receiving the timecode signal. Uh, I guess I'll just put this thing back together again and see if it uh, locks back on. So that's the uh, thing back together again. The batteries are still a bit warm. The thermistor is reporting that the temperature inside the unit did climb a little bit. Um, I've set it back to English language and minus one hours from Central European time. So now I'm going to take it back out in the garden and just see if it will, when pressing the uh, acquire button, reacquire the signal and lock back on to the uh, Frankfurt transmitter. So it's back up on the shed roof to uh, try and give it the best chance of reacquiring the time code from Germany. Is it going to do it? Let's give it a couple of minutes. And it's just done it. It's acquired the uh, time and date, of course not while I was filming. It took several minutes to do it, which is really strange. 4th of August, Thursday, and it's nearly 1pm now. So there it is. That's the uh, £4.99 radio controlled alarm clock from Lidl. Uh, it's kept me amused for ooh, over an hour, I think. I nearly managed to blow it up, but not quite. It's still working fine. Uh, receives its time and date information all the way from Frankfurt on a carrier frequency of 77.5 kilohertz. And uh, it does take a while to acquire the data, presumably because um, the receiver chip is only uh, receiving part of the string each time, and it just takes dozens, hundreds probably, of attempts to actually get a complete string of data with all the parity bits intact. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty neat alarm clock. I might actually use it for its intended purpose. Cheerio.